Welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhelp, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. In Huskers news, congratulations to Nebraska high jumpers Jenna Rogers and Riley Mastin, who both qualified for the NCAA Outdoor Championships after they cleared the mark of 5-11 and 1-4th to finish in the top 12 at the NCAA West Preliminary Round on Saturday. Both will compete in the Outdoor Champions in Eugene, Oregon from June 8th to June 11th. The pair will join Mason Connor, Maddie Harris, Axelina Johansson, Murda Kulisic, Berger Lambrex Jr., Darius Luff, Maxwell Otterdahl, LaQuasha Stepney, and Alex Talley as Husker track and field athletes who will compete at those NCAA Outdoor Championships. Over to pro sports and in the MLB today, the Twins took down the Tigers earlier this afternoon, winning that one 8-2. to two. They'll play again later tonight. The Guardians lead the Royals 3-1 to one in the third. The Giants and Phillies are scoreless in the first. Just about to start, the Angels are in the Bronx to battle the Yankees at 6:05. Seattle is in Baltimore for a 6:05 start. At 6.07, the Blue Jays host the White Sox. The Reds will visit the Red Sox at 6.10 p.m. Game 2 of the Twins and Tigers is at 6.10 as well. And wrapping up that 6.10 block of games, the Nationals are in Queens for an NLE showdown with the Mets. Later, the Padres clash with the Cardinals. That's at 6.45. The Brewers and Cubs will meet at 7.05, as will the Rays and Rangers. The Braves travel to Arizona at 8.40. The Astros will take on the A's also at 8.40. And then the Pirates will battle the Dodgers out west at 9 10 p.m. The NHL Western Conference Finals gets underway tonight at 7 p.m. as two of the NHL's best players square off in Connor McDavid as he leads the Oilers against Nathan McKinnon and the Colorado Avalanche. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhelpt and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Bischoff comes set and the pitch. Fastball drilled into the center field. Racing back is on. Racing back. It's over his head. And it is gone. Home run. Brace Matthews. Day with a line, the first pitch, and Wallace grounds it back up the middle, base hit to center field. Squire scores, Andrews around third, she's going to score, and the Huskers take the lead. Banjoff turns and crushes one to left, Mays is back, he's to the wall, he looks and is gone. Banjoff gets a homer out of here to left, the Huskers add another one, it's 9-3, to three, Corn Huskers. First pitch to Peter on. Lifted in the air to left. Wind's going to help it. Banjoff back. He's to the track. He's to the wall. He jumps and makes a terrific catch as he falls into the fence for out number three. 3-1 three, Huskers. First pitch. Livingston grounds to third. Great to her left. Has it. Throws to first. In time! And Nebraska has won the 2022 Big Ten Tournament title for the first time in school history. They've won the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome to summer, right? We have put Memorial Day weekend in the rearview mirror. That usually indicates the start of the summer months. We're glad everybody's back with us tonight for another edition of Sports Sunday. How was your holiday weekend? It was great. Did a little bit of everything. So a little bit of pool, a little bit of... Some warm went, days, yeah. Yeah, I went to the range actually uh have you ever been to the fairways yep okay where you just hit into the lake yep (laughs) it's almost like hey that kind of can help you get over your fear of hitting into the water too if you're just just... keep doing that yeah if you live at one of those places you can play for free yeah it's part of kind of a membership when you live at that place i don't live there but it was a great deal and i just it was on the evening you know on on the other side of that highway the highlands is a really good golf course okay kind of back in there i'm just kind of starting to get back like you know where i had some time highlands would be close for you to go to it's a good track so i told my dad and you know i play every year with him in a father's day tournament sometimes this might be the only time i get to play but i told him hey this year i promise i'm gonna come ready to go yep. so i started my prep work my training i'm gonna be ready to go uh so maybe we can finish uh hopefully we don't make the a flight but you know if you make the b flight right. c flight and win it you know maybe that would be good for us so uh but anyways went to the range a little bit and then um got some laundry and cleaning done in my apartment so good. when it was raining a little bit of everything no top gun didn't go see top gun no i didn't i didn't did you I, no i didn't get to see it i hear it's wonderful i've heard um, it's really good yep. but i haven't heard it i mean i haven't seen it if you go to the highlands at all to play 
you might run into a Husker athlete or two. A lot really? of guys, a lot of people play up there. A lot of football, some baseball guys I know play up there a lot. So I am working on, um, hopefully it comes through, um, we all know that Travis Vokalek likes to golf. He does. Austin Allen was a good golfer. Yes, they all played in a foursome, and um, it was always arguing on who was the best, but apparently yep. Travis is actually probably legitimately the best. He's actually a really good golfer. I wonder and if so, he's playing yet, though, because he had that surgery on the shoulder. So what's crazy is my dad had the same injury, yep. and it doesn't hurt on your swing. It whatever it was because that's what really? he told me when he came in uh, right after he had the surgery back in December. He's like, it's kind of crazy. Your golf swing it doesn't affect it. So like it didn't hurt. Uh, he didn't push it by any means, and he didn't golf until he was released. But that injury, however it was, wherever it was with the surgery, this motion doesn't it, bother. What on that shoulder? It did not bother him, and hmm. so. Um, He's back to golfing, and but one of the things we're going to do is uh, maybe do like an interview, like a chip and chat with him, yes. and, and go out and do. So we'll ha probably hopefully have that for one of the first uh, Scott show, one of the very first Scott shows that we do for on TV. Very good, cool. No, a lot of those guys. Play. Who was Austin always playing with? I know Travis. Well, Austin was part played of it. in a foursome with Travis Vokalek. Adrian Martinez and Cam Jurgens. The there four of them had a foursome, and they I bet would. Cam could hit it a ways. Yes. Yes, he could, but I think he was kind of inconsistent. Um, yeah. Spraying it off. Yeah. yeah so, um, but, you know, he's a freak athlete. Yep. I, all those guys were, you know, so they, um, but they have, I did ask Austin who his group is that he plays with now, and he said Chubba, Purdy, and yeah. then um, Nate and Ian. The uh, Borkagers. Yeah. Yeah, the Borkagers. Yeah. And Zach, is it Winemaster? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So Zach is the holder on on the kickoffs, are the PATs and field goals. So because that was one of his concerns, it's like I got to find a new group to play golf with. So yep. apparently he's found a new good. new group with. And I bet they play up the Highlands up there where you were talking about. So that's a good place so to go. So we'll uh, we'll try to get a feature going with Austin fun. on the golf course, and um, yeah, that'd be fun. Maybe sh actually let him put his money where his mouth is. Like, okay, are you really good? Because now we're gonna get it on video. We're gonna see. <laughs> Everybody's going to be analyzing your swing to see how good your, your swing is. So, good. I'm glad you had a good weekend. I hope everybody did. It was so nice that it warmed up because so many people love to go to the lake this time of year. There's so many lakes around. And so get your boat out, sit around on that. So I hope everybody had a good, safe weekend. I know it was, there's been some stuff happening in bad car crash in, in the middle of, of Lincoln over the weekend. It was pretty tragic as well. But hope everybody was back and safe and, and ready to go. It is, even though we haven't flipped to June yet, tomorrow will be June 1st, it does feel like summer. It really does. It really does. I mean, and it, it kind of felt like that to me last week. Um, it started did. to feel like it. I feel like once baseball and softball are over, that's kind of when it sinks in. So that was the first full week, but now we're into the second full week. And um, yeah, it's um, kind of a little bit of a downtime of the year. You kind of can catch your breath a little bit, but I know we still have some um, lots of content in the works coming I, up this summer. I followed along closely the Big Ten baseball tournament in Omaha, and boy, did they miss the Huskers. Uh, the, the attendance yeah, was horrible. It never got and better. I w when I would play, they would have some fans that were there, but outside of that, there really wasn't. And again, a big reason for that tournament being in Omaha is that you think the Oscars would be there. So a fail on Nebraska's part really hurt that tournament. I felt bad for Rutgers. The Selection Monday show yesterday, the Big Ten only got two bids. Maryland, who's going to host this weekend, and they were the regular season champions. And Michigan, who won the automatic bid by winning the tournament, I thought for sure Rutgers was going to get a bid. They were really good all year long. They didn't. Um, that smart. What was their RPI? 40. That's shocking. Was I there know. two? Was there a bunch of teams that qualified? There were that, a lot of upsets. Yeah. At the tournament level, like, including the Big Ten with Michigan winning. Yeah. Nobody thought Michigan would win, so a lot of big upsets happened. But across. still, that's pretty bad. That the Big Ten only got two in. It's not. I mean, it's a bad look for the league, and I, yeah. you know, the league has fought this perception that they're not very good at the ball bat sports. And I thought with Michigan's run in 2019 all the way to the finals where they got beat in the championship match by Vanderbilt, I thought that might help the league. But only two bids is really disappointing for the league. Uh, we're going to talk about the tournament with Mike Rooney from ESPN coming up in hour number two. Uh, I was disappointed by that. You'd like to see the league get three, four bids. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I was thinking about this, too, because even just the way that 
um, softball unfolded, and there's just what, this bias. Seven bids? Was there seven bids for the league, though, in softball? But what, what I was getting is that there was, there's this bias towards the SEC uh, softball. Only one team got in, Florida, and they had how many teams get up? Alabama got upset. Missouri got upset. Um, you know, all these teams, Arkansas got upset. Yep. Tennessee got upset. So, you know, they, they have these favorable draws, and then they only got one team in. And Virginia Tech, another, I thought there was this wait. ACC didn't get a single team in, and there was all this talk about, how, oh, the ACC is, uh, you know, this is their year, the ACC, ACC. And they didn't get a single team in. So, um, you know, the ACC network and then the SEC network, all with ESPN. So I feel like there's there's a little bit of this bias there towards is. the SEC and the ACC, especially this year with softball. And then, you know, I just, I think the Big Ten not promoting, you know, softball and baseball, like, you know, like how ESPN does for their baseball and softball programs. Right. I think that comes back to hurt the Big Ten when it comes to the postseason because even Northwestern was the only one that got to host and then they had to go on the road for supers. So then they didn't even get a national seat in the top eight. And they're arguably the fourth best team going into the World Women's College World Series this year. Yeah. Um, and they had to go on the road and super. So I think all that being said is I, I think the Big Ten has got to do a better job of promoting their baseball and softball programs because it only hurts these teams in the postseason. They don't really care about them. And that's sad that they don't. Northwestern and I caught some of that super. That was terrific drama. That was Those games with Arizona State were terrific. Great win for them to get to Oklahoma City. I know you're going to have more on this tomorrow. As that field is set, that, uh, that uh, World Series begins on Thursday down in Oklahoma City, and the Cats will represent the Big Ten down there. As far as the baseball, you had nine SEC, nine ACC teams get in. So those two conferences took up we had two automatic qualifiers. Those two conferences took up 16 at-large bids out of just those two leagues. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lot. Again, I just, I don't, I mean, is it, we'll see how it all unfolds. We'll see who makes it to Omaha. But, I mean, it just, you know, with softball, the biases were not right. Right. You know, with the ACC and the SEC, obviously, it was the Pac-12. There were three unseated teams with softball that made it to the Women's College World Series. And then it was like one, five, nine, seven and then 14 and then three unseated teams so it just you know i there's there's this issue with uh, you know thinking that some leagues are better than the others and and i know most years maybe that works out but we'll see how baseball unfolds it's certainly how they seated softball to me was not right this year you know the big tens come up short a couple times we and i think you and i had references minnesota a few years ago had like 59 wins and didn't even get to host a regional so the league and again we keep kind of going back poking at the league on this show and i hate doing it because we're a proud member of the big 10 conference but at times i don't feel like they support their teams enough and one of my complaints with the Big Ten on the baseball committee, they, we didn't have a representative on the committee. There was no Big Ten representative. The Big Ten needs to demand. We're a big league. We need to have somebody on the committee that picks this tournament. Yeah, it's almost like it's just all about football and volleyball sometimes. And, you know, there are good programs that, you know, again, we've talked about with Nebraska, maybe if they host a regional, they probably have a better chance of Getting going to of the it. Super. Absolutely. And if they go to Missouri, they're, you know, Missouri got upset. And right. I know, you know, but I just, you know, I just don't think that sometimes it's necessarily always fair. And even Megan Kahn was talking about that was a big reason why she was brought on with women's basketball to help go fight for the women's basketball because they felt like they got the short end of the stick a couple years ago yeah. in the tournament and the seating and, and all of that. And so, you know, you just got to have someone that's a voice in there that's fight. She was calling the committee constantly like, hey, this is what our teams did this week. This is what we got going on. And I, I think probably maybe look need to look into having somebody represent the diamond sports in that area of calling Agreed. the committees and saying, because look, if if we're going to be on a streaming platform and you're not going to see us on, you know, ESPN, ESPNU, ESPN, you know, all those kinds of things, then you need to have someone that's calling in, passing along those storylines. Hey, look what this team did this week. Hey, we got this pitcher doing this. You got to make sure that you stay relevant and that we're in those conversations when you don't have, um, you're not on Fox every week. You know, did Fox even, Big Fox even put any baseball or mm -hmm. softball games on this I year? FS1 has a package with the Big East, but that's all they but do. But no baseball or softball no. on the Fox Sports no. 1. So it's only the Big Ten Network, right. which not everybody gets. And ESPN had a few. We were yeah. on ESPN, baseball was on ESPNU, I think, once or twice. Um, but that's the worry. 
is ESPN, and you and I have talked about this in the past, is ESPN have so much influence because they have the ACC and the SEC network. They're calling shots, I think, on who's getting into these tournaments and who's getting to host. Well, and they're putting their they're putting their teams in their league on their big channels right. all the time. All like, the time. You know, Texas and Oklahoma softball was on ESPN, and Oklahoma State and Oklahoma softball was on ESPN, and I even think they had a couple on ABC. So, you know, you're talking about when you're putting teams on those channels, and not everybody gets a Big Ten, and certainly not everybody gets Big Ten Plus. Right. So, you know, and you're not on Fox Sports 1. That's also part of the problem, just that exposure, that national exposure of making sure that you're relevant on that national stage. Um, you know, that's that's a big part of it, too. Is, hey, I'm reminded of, of those softball teams and baseball teams because they're on a lot. They've right. got some game on most of the time, especially when uh, once the NBA starts winding down. They put a lot of those sports on. They do. Congrats to Northwestern Softball. That's great that they were able to win a road super and get to Oklahoma City. They'll have to face the Sooners in the first round Here, on Thursday. The good thing about that, though, is if even if they uh, if they lost to Oklahoma, they flip. They go to the other side of the True. bracket. So then they get that side. And the other side of the bracket, Oklahoma State's on that side, but the other side of the bracket, because they don't reseed those brackets, the lower side of the bracket, I think, That's is a little weaker than yeah. the upper because it's you got UCLA, Oklahoma, um, Texas, and UCLA. No, oh, um, anyways, the uh, top part of the bracket with Oklahoma is a little bit more challenging. And because they spread it out a little bit, uh, uh, Northwestern, if they lost to Oklahoma, they'd flip to the bottom half of the bracket, which might be a little bit uh, easier road for them. So. Well, I'll put my conference hat on here and I'll root for the Cats. Down, I am down too. I mean, and I think it's a good program too. And you saw Coach Ravel come out and, and you know, in support and a lot of Nebraska uh, players and a lot of the coaches in the Big Ten were all happy to see Northwestern go and, and Isn't represent. It, uh, Nebraska never played them. Didn't play them all year. Didn't yeah. play them in the regular season and didn't run into them in the tournament because they got upset in the semis. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here's what we have on the program tonight. Jay Foreman's going to join us. You know, the Huskers have added a lot of parts to that defense. How's that going to work? I mean, a lot of these guys are showing up, weren't part of spring practice. We're going to talk about the challenges that the defensive staff has and get Jay's thought about that coming up here in a little bit. You hear Jay on Big Red Reaction after Husker football games, and you will again here this fall. So looking forward to talking to the former national champion of the Cornhuskers here in just a little bit. Hour number two, Mike Rooney from ESPN, who covers college baseball. You probably saw him over the weekend. He was on Selection Show yesterday. Called some of the games of the Big 12 tournament down in Arlington last week as well. We'll get Mike's take on the baseball field. And Dave Manerick, who is the executive director of the Nebraska Sports Council, they run the Cornhusker State Games. We are 45 days away from those getting going. We've got a deadline coming up for you to get registered to get compete in one of their many sports that they put on. And this is like the 37th, 38th year for the Cornhusker State Games. That's coming up in hour number two. Our... Uh, Sports Highly Hotline, open and available for you. It's brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance, buy online at woodhouse.com. We're back to talk to Jay coming up next. Shop Woodhouse Buick GMC first for all your vehicle needs. With two ways to shop, we make car buying easy. Purchase your new or certified pre-owned vehicle all from the comfort of your own home with available pickup and delivery options. Plus, chat with a sales team member, reserve your vehicle, and complete a credit application online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. Or visit our climate-controlled showroom for comfortable shopping year-round. Streamlining your car buying experience. This is Woodhouse Buick GMC. We are professional grade. A tradition of winning doesn't happen overnight. Like any team, you got to be tough, play smart, and work hard. No one understands this more than Ford Motor Company. They built the best team in the game with Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks 45 years straight, the iconic Ford Bronco, and the most powerful Ford Explorer ever. Shop online at buyfordnow.com or visit your local Ford dealer to buy or custom build the perfect truck or SUV for you. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales partnership with the U.S. Departments of Defense and Homeland Security. The lab brings together world-leading expertise in agriculture and a deep understanding of the complexities of strategic deterrence across the threat spectrum and in multiple domains. Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in-venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! 
Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Husker fans, get ready to be part of the excitement of the 2022-23 Nebraska women's basketball season by joining the season ticket waitlist today. The Huskers return all five starters from a team that won 24 games and advanced to the 2022 NCAA tournament. Make the first choice on the best seats to watch the Huskers in person at Pinnacle Bank Arena this year. Join the waitlist by July 31st at huskers.com slash request list. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. You always dreamed of owning your own farm. Now you're living your dream, and it's time to pick the tractor that makes it all come together. Massey Ferguson has reinvented what compact and utility tractors can be and redefined what they do, making them easier to operate, more comfortable to drive, more versatile than ever. Massey Ferguson gives Nebraska farmers the power and performance to win in the field. MERS Farm Equipment in Falls City, Nebraska. www.mersfarmequipment.com when you're a sports fan, it's kind of like having a new love interest. You want to know all about them. Only, instead of learning about someone's third grade crush, you want to know the latest scores, stats, and lineups. To get that, you need Cox Internet. Cox gives you that window to look deeply into your beloved team's soul. Not to mention their injury list. Cox. We're sports 24-7. Learn more at cox.com sports. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections. When it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment. And you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Everyone knows that Dakota Mac is known for their great rates on long-term fixed ag real estate loans. But just how long-term are they? They're even longer term than the silent treatment your mom gave you after she found out you backed over her peony bushes with the riding lawnmower. Even though it could have happened to anyone. Oof. Talk about long-term. Hi, it's Nick Renault with Dakota Mac. Call me at 308-380-7564 to learn about our competitive 30-year fixed rates on ag real estate loans. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center. It is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Tuesday night following a holiday weekend. Tomorrow's the first day. Where did May go, by the way? May uh, is gone. Yeah, I don't know. That's a, We said the other day before the holiday weekend, I felt like we just were talking about the spring game. <laughs> That's almost two months ago. Spring game was almost two months ago. <laughs> so, yeah. Crazy. Huskers are back working out. Uh, the new players, a lot of them will arrive this late this week and into the weekend, and then they jump into full workouts. The basketball teams report over the weekend. They start their summer workouts on next Monday, week from today, week from yesterday. So it is uh, cranked up and ready uh, for these student athletes. There's not a whole lot uh, downtime for any of them. Not a lot of downtime for a guy like Jay Foreman. He's always on the go, moving and shaking. Hello, Jay Foreman. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you guys doing? We're good. You know, I just, um, we, we wanted to get your thoughts because spring ball ended almost two months ago. We were just talking about how quickly that flew by. And I think we all knew, Jay, that that defense, particularly the defensive line, needed some help. And through the recruiting process, through the transfer portal, the Huskers have added some bodies. That's got to be a challenge, though, for the staff now, doesn't it? To, to not have those guys for spring and then try to get them ready to play here in a couple of months? Yeah, I mean, it could be, but I think in this day and age, you know, I think they're 
well prepared for it. I, I'm sure they, you know, they're just not, you know, get going after these guys just cold, you know, cold turkey. So um, transition and roster turnover, I think, is here to stay. Um, obviously, with the NCAA rules, and then obviously, I think it's just a way of some of the way um, younger kids are built. Um, I think they're going to do a good job. I think, you know, really, to be honest with you, um, looking at stuff from last year, I think the true, I call it true intrinsic leadership was uh, ready to, you know, flourish with some of the younger guys, which were younger guys last year. So that means obviously they're, you know, having a more role this year. So new guys coming in um, will be kind of welcomed with open arms. And then obviously they just got to get right in and start working hard and building continuity because um, we all know that you have like a, transfer portal kind of after the season and then another one, you know, after spring and then things kind of settle down uh, as you get going into the season. So, you know, the new guys that they went and targeted and got um, or come right in and, you know, try to make an impact. I think it's good to have competition like that. I think it's good to uh, obviously add depth. Um, but ultimately, as we all know, that the uh, what you do on, you know, Saturdays, you know, is the most important thing uh, moving forward. Hey, Jay, it's Jessica here. How do you like the uh, momentum of this program? And, you know, the, you, you just talked about the transfer portal, but the excitement of some of the guys that are coming in and, and the recruiting and the new coaches. How, as a former player and a guy that covers this program so closely, have you liked the way that this thing is moving on this trajectory here going into this upcoming season? Uh, I like it because, uh, you know, for the, I'm sure, look, when you go three and nine and haven't won as many games as anybody would like, um, you know, you, you got all eyes on you and then they're always looking at you through like kind of a, you know, like a dusty or, or, or dusty lens. And so, you know, as much as they could say they want you to do well, you know, a lot of people don't. So really at the end of the day, I think it's a credit to the coach and the coaching staff, the University of Nebraska, the kind of things that, you know, they were able to do and, small bits and pieces to show that there is some potential there to be able to go out and recruit, you know, a guy like say Oshawn Mathis, who I guess for all practical purposes, was probably the number one pass rush recruit, um, you know, get a couple of good defensive linemen, get a young guy, Kane Williams, you know, that has a ton of playing time available, you know, as far as years of eligibility left to get him to come here and believe in it. You know, if he really thought that, Nebraska couldn't be good or the opportunity wasn't there. I'm sure he had other opportunities to go to. And so I think it's a good thing. Um, I think that Nebraska has uh, kind of been ahead of the you know curve on it and welcomed it and embraced it and, and always are trying to uh, maybe stay a step or, or two ahead and do it the right way. And that's what's obviously a big, big uh, you know, important factor as well. You played in an era where there wasn't this portal and guys moving off rosters onto rosters, but you did. You play in the NFL where that is common to happen, where you join a different team maybe every year even. How, how hard is it going to be for these guys to learn the terminology between now and August 27th when they kick it off with Northwestern? Is that going to be a, a big challenge for like a O'Shawn Mathis to learn all that, or is it, will it be a, a smooth transition, do you think? Well, I'm sure it's going to be, you know, it's not easy, but, you know, football is football. And you just got to get used to the term, terminology and everything kind of correlates together. So um, I'm sure there'll be like a learning curve there. But I think that, again, they have a good culture and good guys around that ultimately everybody wants to win and they're kind of all pushing in the same direction. Look, it's, a, it's a, definitely a huge get and, and obviously it's going to give some guys a little bit of angst because a guy that's coming in at their position with a lot of you know fanfare and notoriety but ultimately when you get in there guys want to you know you know put forth the best uh, effort and then help the team win so ultimately what they're going to do um is rally around each other and yeah it is a little transition i've dealt with it in the nfl but once you kind of get the principles down and really dive into it it's going to take a lot of work on all these individuals coming in as well because if they really want to, I guess, perform up to their, uh, you know, expectations and hopefully their own personal standards, they're going to have to know this defense in and out. And then also what they're going to have to do is show the work ethic day in and day out, the persistence, the consistency to be counted on and respected. So it's not just, hey, I'm here, I'm going to learn a couple plays, I'm just going to, you know, pass rush and then everybody just be, you know, happy I'm here. You know, don't don't sleep on you know Nebraska's record. And I think they don't have talent. And guys don't have a lot of pride about themselves. So uh, everybody's got to come in and earn their stripes. And one thing is earn and learn the playbook. And, and before you can do anything on the field, you got to know what you're doing off the field. 
So just recently announced that now um, the teams can have a little bit of uh, work coaches with the players in the summer. Normally that's not something that uh, has been allowed, but um, just in addition to that, which is new this year, the, the work that coaches can do with players, what's the goal for these guys here in June and July before, hey, two days and fall camp kicks off the last week of July? Uh, well, I mean, it just kind of depends. You know, if you're coming off a little of a, you know, surgery or injury, you want to get back and healthy, you know, healthy as you can and come into camp, you know, at the peak, you know, physical condition. Um, you got a new guys coming in. You want to learn not only the playbook, you want to learn your teammates. They want to learn, you know, you, what makes you, you know, tick, uh, how you're motivated. Uh, but then also you want to see some, you know, I guess, uh, continuity, right? You want to see guys really, you know, gravitate and start to push each other, hang out with each other outside of, you know, practice or the workouts. Um, so it, it's all steam, you know, it's all steam, you know, forward because, you know, ultimately, um, you know, spring practice is very, very important. But, you know, in my eyes, you know, that's kind of like child's play. You know, now you're training for the season. When they, when you're taking, you know, score, everything counts because there is no kind of like tomorrow, especially for these players because, or this team, because you can't say, oh, I'm not going to give 150% today because I can come back tomorrow. Well, there's teams out there that are doing it every single day. Uh, so we got to do that and then some. So it's it's a, a very, very intense, you know, type of process because I think we're under 100 days. And so, yeah, it seems like maybe if you're like mid-80s, that's a long way away. But next thing you know, you're only 20 days out, right? So that three weeks go by quick. So uh, every day you got to prepare as if you're going to be playing Northwestern here in the week. And um, that's the most important game. Uh, because that's the first one up, but that's the one that you need to want to start your, you know, season off on the right foot. Um, and there's a lot of pressure going in this game. And so to, in order to, I guess, alle- alleviate pressure, you got to make sure you're prepared for any and everything. But then also when you're doing, you know, work with the coaches in, in whatever form or fashion they're able to this year, you're working to get better. Don't just go there to go through the motions, go there to get better. Uh, because there's some players that had decent seasons last year. But, you know, to be honest with you, nobody is, uh, should feel, sleep at night and think like I've arrived. And that's a good thing. Um, and so if everybody's taking the, the mindset that we need to get better, I think the team will go out there and perform up to the standards. Getting busy with former national champion Jay Foreman, part of our Huskers radio network here on Sports Island. Jay Eric Chenander has primarily been a three-man front defensive coordinator. Last year, I think they mixed in some four-man fronts with getting guys like O'Shawn now on the roster. Can you see them playing more four-man fronts up on defense? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the way that college football is, you got to be able to play a little bit of nickel defense. So for people out there, that's four defensive linemen. And, you know, you can have three defensive linemen, a guy that likes to rush at the same position, you know, just being on two feet. Um, so, you know, they, they, they mix in some, and it's all predicated on who you're playing. Uh, but you got to be able to play the run there. So, look, there's no, even if you look at a team you know, like Georgia, um, where they had multiple pass rushers, uh, you know, playing that, you know, the outside positions, and they had outside guys that were able to kick in inside to, you know, obviously crank up the speed and to be able to bring more pressure. Um, you got to have secondary guys and second level guys that are able to, you know, bring some, you know, blitz packages and stuff. So when you add a guy like O'Shawn Mathis, win uh, in the middle. Um, you know, and Drew, the other guy in the middle, along with Ty Robinson and other young guys, it, it does two things. One, it gives you a little bit of experience uptick. You know, ideally, you like to have the playmaking with O'Shawn Mathis, with with uh, Garrett Nelson, Caleb Tanner. You got a young guy like Jamari Butler. So you're able to, you know, come out there with three or four guys you know you can depend on, bring the guys on that you know you want to develop that's inside and outside. And then once you know you got a good defensive line, conversely, you're going to eventually have a good offensive line because they're going to be going against each other all the time. Um, but defensively, adding a guy like that, opens up a lot of things ideally for your coordinator so um you know first and foremost you got to do well against the run uh so we can get them in third and longs and stuff like that but uh adding a guy like that is definitely a big get and i'm sure eric shenander is excited about that uh to you know go along with the guys that they have on the roster and one thing i'll say about this and i want to be too long is that fans need to understand just because we go out and get a guy at a position this is just my opinion I'm, i'm not speaking for the coaches but just because you go out and get a guy at said position doesn't necessarily mean that the guys that are on the roster aren't good. It, it's it could be a you know a guy that might be injured or he hasn't doesn't have the experience or hasn't had the opportunity. So 
I think the uh, they still have guys out there that are going to make a splash, and I'm excited to see them all go out there and hopefully go to work. Okay, I'm, I'm interested to get your perspective on give us a player, both an offensive player and a defensive player, you're most intrigued to see how fall camp will unfold for them. Woo, putting you on the Ooh. spot. <laughs> that, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a hard question. Um, well, of course, I mean, let's just, the, the, the guaranteed easy ones are like the Casey Thompson, the Oshawn Mathis. So I guess, the, you know, kind of be off the beaten path, uh, I, I'm going to go. I'm going to say for me, Personally, I'm really interested to see, and I'm going to do two on defense, Jamari Butler and Hill at corner. Um, the guy that's coming from ASU that has experience, but has really, I think, really cemented himself as one of the better cover guys that they've had in camp just through spring. And then Jamari Butler, who I, I've always said that uh, I think has next-level talent, um, and he has the right mindset. Now I'm looking to see how you know, I saw a big jump in him, in my opinion, through spring. Um, I think he wants it. I think he's willing to do whatever it takes to get it. I think he, you know, embraced the competition. So I look for another uptick in fall camp. And then off- offensively, um, you know, I'll just say, the, you know, the running back room. You know, um, I think they just have – because what I, I'm going to say this, because you got different types of backs. I think you got the do-it-all back of Ramirez Johnson. you got Gant. That could be, your, you know, your change of pace in a bruising type of, you know, standpoint. Um and then you got Grant came in, and I think he, you know, obviously, you know, had the, you know, big run in spring, but it's really, really been consistent. And then you got some other guys, um, you know, coming off of, of injury. So who can, you know, really step up and be the bell cow, and then who can fit different roles. The, that running back room, I think, can really, really help out the offensive line along with the, you know, the quarterback and receivers uh, because you're able to go there and have four guys that you know that can answer the bell. And it's not, inter- it's not like musical chairs, right? It's like a guy that you know that's going to be your starter. And then for this type of game, you know, maybe if a guy you usually depend on, say, like five to six carries a game, you can crank him up to eight to ten to 12 because he's either hot or this team is not prepared for him. I think when you have multiple options that can play their role to the best that they can be, their ability, I think, is, is really going to help this offense, which conversely will help the defense. You know, we can get into, you know, clock management and all that stuff. So I think uh, those two guys on defense along with the running back room is going to be the most intriguing to me. I like it. Good stuff. You good? You playing any golf? What are you doing right now? I'm just coaching a lot of a lot of basketball. It's my last summer of uh, you know coaching uh, these 14 year olds. So I'm good. You know, busy with that and and having a good summer, but no golf for me. And uh, you know, the wind. You know, I'm not a wind player. I'd say that <laughs> my game is not built for the wind, but it's not built for any. Uh, you know, type of climate. But uh, I've just been doing that and staying busy. Yeah, you're an NBA guy. You got to pick for the finals. Uh, I'm going to go with Golden State. You know, I, I like Boston, but I'm just weary of how they uh, give away games and, the you know, the lack of maturity down the stretch. And I think, you know, the Golden State Warriors are really, really deep and they're really, really savvy. Um, and I think I think Boston will give them one or two games. And once you do that in the NBA Finals, there is no uh, coming back from it. So I'm looking for the Warriors to win. Good stuff. Jay, we appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. Have a great summer. Looking forward to working with you here in the fall. All right, you guys do. There he is, Jay Foreman, former national champion. Great to have him with us. Joining us on our Sports Nightly Hotline, brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop, finance, buy online at woodhouse.com. I think he's excited about O'Shawn <laughs> Mathis. And we're going to talk to him later this week. Yes, we're going to get him in studio. I can't wait. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to watching him play as a Cornhusker as well. All right, phone lines, text lines open for you, 402-413-2400. Back with more next. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. 
Hi, I'm Nebraska Pick 3. I'm my day. I'm 2 by 2 We're three great lotto games from the Nebraska Lottery. And this is our first radio spot ever. But we've only got 30 seconds, so we gotta talk fast. With Nebraska Pick 3, you get to choose your own bet type. With my day, you choose a six-digit date. And 2 by 2 has a $22,000 top prize. And, and we're, we're all just $1, $1 per play, play with, with drawings, drawings every day. day. That was easy. And we did great. With eight seconds to spare. We should be doing all the lottery's ads. <clears throat> Sorry, that gig is already taken. Must be 19, please play responsibly. Preparation. It's the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Cenex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down, and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the fields, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant decal brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with decal. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to iian.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at TrustedChoice.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. When you're ready to pursue a career-building college degree, go with the school you know and trust, the University of Nebraska. And if you need the flexibility, convenience, and affordability of an online degree program, you can go online with the University of Nebraska with courses developed specifically for the online learner by our four regionally accredited NU campuses. It's a valuable online education for your very real world future. Go to online.nebraska.edu to learn more. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. The 2022 Nissan Rogue Sport is street savvy, road trip ready, and always fun to drive. Equipped with standard features like rear automatic braking, blind spot warning, and high beam assist so you can surround yourself with confidence on the road. Plus, explore the three Rogue Sport trims to find the one that's right for you and your lifestyle. Choose your experience and shop, finance, and purchase online at Woodhouse.com or in store at Woodhouse Nissan in Bellevue or at Woodhouse Place. Nothing goes better with Husker Sports than Fairberry. Fairberry, premium quality hot dogs deliver the home game experience to your family and friends. The highest quality beef, pork, and natural spices give you the best tasting hot dog and your hometown favorite Big Red Hot Dog. Look for Fairberry hot dogs all year long at your local grocery store. Fairberry, the official hot dog of the Huskers and Nebraska fans everywhere. At Great Western Bank, they understand what commitment to community means. It's more than setting up shop. For Great Western Bank, commitment means growing together and serving their communities. With more than 50 locations in Nebraska, they are dedicated to making life great. Thank you 
Lincoln, for allowing them to be a part of this great community. Great Western Bank, member FDIC. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. Nebraska researchers are designing the next generation of roadside steel barriers through an industry partnership with Traffic's devices. This partnership has produced the Delta Crash Cushion, a simplistic, effective way to keep drivers safe on highways. This barrier is vital for roadside safety and significantly improves the chances motorists will be able to walk away from roadside collisions. Nebraska 811 says go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cuddy back with you on a Tuesday night after a holiday weekend. 402 413 2400, the number to dot us up with a comment or question. Or if you want to fire off a text like Bill out in Portland, Oregon did, he wants to know if we've heard any news on the conference's TV deal. No, we've not. We did. We were told maybe by the end of May, which today is the last day. So I got to be close, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. The bidding war, hopefully the bidding war is that great. But, you know, it's taken a while. I'm rooting for CBS. I want that 2.30 window on Saturdays that the SEC yeah. has had for years. I think that would be a great combination with Fox and BTN. I know this makes people nervous if you kind of slide away from ESPN. I'm not. I say let's do that. I think that'd be great. Plus, CBS already has a part of the, the basketball TV package. Keep that going. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, look, I, it's you're talking about when you're on an ESPN package, you're competing with a bunch of different games. But when you're on the SEC, that is the game of the week. And a lot of times it's the game of all of college football because of the SEC and, and all of that. So, you know, if that package is no longer there, hey, we'll, we'll take over that spotlight. If you had the big noon package, which they're going to with Fox, yeah. then you follow that up with the sec your second best game could be on CBS at, at 2.30. 30, yeah. And then you do FS1 or BTN for your night game. Yeah, you that's would, perfect. You would cover the day. I think that's a great setup. Greg, you need to make a call Kevin in. Kevin Warren, just call me. I know. I'm here you, to help him. You've got it all lined up. We, we need to just get you on the phone and, and let you negotiate all the contracts. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help as <laughs> best I can here, Jessica. That's what I'm, I'm trying to get done. Tim had it in the ticker. Congrats. 11 Husker track athletes. Headed to the NCAA championships. Very good representation. High Jump City. We're like High Jump School, I mean, aren't we? This is High Jump Capital of the World. High Jump U. High Great Jump U stuff. right here. And you had the High Jump coach on. Dusty was on with you a few weeks yes, ago. Yes, yeah. And he talked about, um, you know, sweeping both indoor, outdoor, Big mm -hmm. Ten titles. And then now they'll go try to uh, compete for a national title. Just both men and women. Yeah, both men and women swept both indoor and outdoor. And so um, I'm, I'm working on trying to get uh, Jenna Rogers on, too. She has a. Uh, She's the female that swept the indoor, outdoor, and, and qualified and was an indoor All-American at, at the high jump. So, And she is a phenomenal story off the track, too. So hopefully we can get her on and, and hear from some of those guys. We were laughing last week. I think I said this on the air, but um, Alex Talley won that award um, at the Night at the Lead, and he came on stage, and Jeremiah was presenting it. And Jeremiah and I were joking, hey, I wonder if he can play on the line. Be a left tackle or something? Yeah. <laughs> or that was at the time where we were needing defensive yeah, line yeah. depth. Yeah. We were like, hey, I wonder if he can play defensive line. We've handled He's a that. big dude. He is a big dude. Good athlete, too. We've, yeah. the, the, the coaching staff's done a pretty good job short up that defensive line, as Jay just Yes, but that was before all this unfolded. Right. So we were laughing about that. It was on its way. Hey, you never on. have depth on either side of the line. That's exactly right. <laughs> can't have no, no, like in baseball, you can't have enough pitching. Hey, buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDO. T Highway Safety Office went long with Jay, unfortunately, but it was great stuff. Glad that he could jump on board with us. So need to get to a break. 402-413-2400. Back to wrap up hour one next. The 2022 Nebraska football season is right around the corner, and we need you in Memorial Stadium this fall. A customizable Husker football three-game mini plan is on sale now for only $180. To purchase your 2022 Husker football three-game mini plan today or for more information, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. Go Big Red. 
At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. There is no place like Nebraska, and there's no place that treats you like home, like Sap Brothers. For 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and been a reliable partner to local farms and Husker fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into their travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Shop Woodhouse Ford first and experience the difference. The all-new 2022 Bronco Sport is built wild for the thrill seeker, the sightseer, and the day tripper. A capable and dependable SUV that's ready to tackle the dirt, dust, and mud. Bronco Sport offers four models to match the way you explore the outdoors. Shop, finance, and buy your way. Online at WoodhouseFord.com or one of our three convenient Ford locations in Blair, Omaha, or Plattsmith. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, it's sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Tuesday night. Last week we heard a great uh, part of the podcast with Kenzie Knuckles as we wrap up Mental Health Awareness Month. That has now dropped, correct? The podcast so the feature, is out? The, the video feature is out. Um, Izzy, uh, Izzy, who works with digital media with uh, Nick, Nick Burkhart's crew, uh, she is fantastic. She helped me put it all together and edit it out. So it's out today, um, final day of May and, and the Mental Health Awareness Month. So it is on the Nebraska Volleyball social media thread. So you Good. can um, watch it there and on YouTube or Facebook, whichever, wherever you do social media. It is out now just in the last hour. So you can uh, watch that. And then because the interviews were um, so great and long and powerful, um, you know, we edited this down to 12 minutes. What you have to do with video, there's just timing restraints. And we aired a little bit of the, the interviews here on Sports Nightly. I'm going to put it together in a complete podcast where you can hear the, whole the yeah. raw interviews. And we'll probably drop that on Thursday so you okay. can hear the full interviews with both Kinsey and Coach Cook. Well, what we played last, I think, Thursday on the show is just gripping. Just gripping. Yeah, I mean, and, and we had the series all throughout the month and, and the three different student athletes that shared their stories, all different journeys with mental health. And so important for them to share it. And I know this made a huge impact and a lot of people have reached out and they've touched a lot of people by sharing their stories. I've had multiple people in the last couple of days say, where's the schedule? <laughs> I don't know. They're right. I mean, we're, we're, uh, Jay said it, we're inside of 90 days for the football. Volleyball starts that same weekend. So I don't know, folks. I don't know. It's got to be coming any day. Well, as soon as it's there, we'll be talking about Oscar volleyball schedule. One hour in the books. Come on back. Better hour to go. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Visit the truck experts at Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Blair for all your new Ram truck needs. From the most awarded light duty truck in America, the 2022 Ram 1500, to the hardworking and capable 2022 Ram 2500, we have the truck to get the job done. Stop out for a test drive in Blair during the Make the Switch event or shop, finance, and buy online with eShop at WoodhouseChryslerJeepDodge.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker Athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. United Healthcare believes small businesses are vital to our economy and an important part of our communities. Join United Healthcare in celebrating small businesses. I'm Rob Broomfield, United Healthcare of Nebraska CEO and a graduate of the University of Nebraska. We want to recognize your small business with the spotlight on small business sweepstakes. Winners receive radio interviews, social media recognition, and more. To enter, visit huskers.com front slash spotlight. United Healthcare, proud partner of Husker Sports. Hy-Vee Mealtime to Go is mealtime made easy. Just order delicious meals online for convenient curbside pickup or have it delivered. Want breakfast? Hy-Vee Mealtime to Go. Need lunch? Hy-Vee Mealtime to Go. Doing dinner? Hy-Vee Mealtime to Go. Get pancakes, burgers, fried chicken, lasagna, high chai Asian dishes, sushi, pizza, and more. If you're craving it, Hy-Vee Mealtime to Go has it with curbside pickup or delivery. Order today at hyvee.com slash mealtime.
Inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhelp, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. In Huskers news, congratulations to Nebraska high jumpers Jenna Rogers and Riley Maston, who both qualified for the NCAA Outdoor Championships after they cleared the mark of 5'11 and a fourth to finish in the top 12 at the NCAA West preliminary round on Saturday. Both will compete in the NCAA Outdoor Championships in Eugene, Oregon from June 8th to June 11th. The pair will join Mason Connor, Maddie Harris, Axelina Johansson, Myrda Kulisic, Berger Lambrecht, Lambrecht Jr., Darius Luff, Maxwell Utterdahl, Laquatia Stepney, and Alex Talley as Huskers track and field athletes who will compete at the NCAA Outdoor Championships. Over to pro sports and in the MLB today, the Twins took down the Tigers earlier this afternoon, winning that one 8-2. The Guardians lead the Royals 6-2 in the sixth. The Giants and Phillies are still scoreless in the fourth. The Yankees lead the Angels 5-0 in the third, jumped on Noah Syndergaard early in that one. Seattle jumped on the Orioles early as they lead 4-0 in the third. In the third as well, the Blue Jays are up on the White Sox 2-1. In Boston, the Red Sox and Red, the Reds and Red Sox are scoreless in the fourth. In Game 2 of the Twins and Tigers doubleheader, Detroit is looking for the split, and they lead 4-0 in the third. The Mets lead the Nationals 2-0 in the second. And in the first, the Padres and Cardinals are scoreless. Later tonight, the Brewers and Cubs will meet at 7.05 p.m. The Rays and Rangers are also set to get underway at 7.05 p.m. The Braves travel to Arizona. They'll play at 8.40, and the Astros take on the A's at 8.40 as well. The Pirates duel the Dodgers as they wrap things up at 9.10. And in the NHL tonight, the Western Conference Finals are set to get underway in just a few moments. as That's two of the best players in the game with two of the best teams in the game, Connor McDavid and the Oilers taking on Nathan McKinnon and the Colorado Avalanche. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhelps, and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Bischoff comes set, and the pitch. Fastball drilled into the center field. Racing back is on. Racing back. It's over his head, and it is gone. Home run, Bryce Matthews. Day with a line, the first pitch, and Wallace grounds it back up the middle, beats it to center field. Squire scores, Andrews around third. She's going to score, and the Huskers take the lead. Banjoff turns and crushes one to left. Mays is back. He's to the wall. He looks and is gone. Banjoff gets a homer out of here to left. The Huskers add another one. It's 9-3, to three, Corn Huskers. First pitch to Peter on. Lifted in the air to left. Wind's going to help it. Banjoff back. He's to the track. He's to the wall. He jumps and makes a terrific catch as he falls into the fence for out number three. 3-1 three Huskers. First pitch. Livingston grounds to third. Great to her left. Has it. Throws to first. In time! And Nebraska has won the 2022 Big Ten Tournament title for the first time in school history. They've won the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. We're back, hour number two, Sports Nightly here on a Tuesday night. Welcome to the program. If you weren't part of hour number one, we'll let you off the hook for that. Hope you had a great Memorial weekend, and I got to spend some time with your family and friends over the last couple of days. The weather was pretty good. I know the lakes were busy, and hope everybody got a chance to rest and relax a little bit as we launch into the summer months. Here's what we have coming up in hour number two. Mike Rooney from ESPN is going to join us. He's a part of ESPN's college baseball coverage. We'll get his thoughts about the bracket, uh, who he likes moving into Omaha in a couple of weeks for the College World Series. Looking forward to chatting with, with Mike. And we'll also hear from Dave Manerick, who's the executive director of the Nebraska Sports Council. They put on the Cornhusker State Games every year, a big undertaking, almost 10,000 participants in that thing. It'll be going on June, July 15th to the 24th. 10,000 people participate in that thing. What what event would you be participating in? You know, I thought about that. Because you're a track guy, right? Yeah, cornhole. I could probably do cornhole. Cornhole? Yeah, they, cornhole's one of the games. One of the... But if you were running, like, track. What was your I, event? I was a pole vaulter. You I were could a pole not, vaulter? Yeah, I could not do that anymore. Oh. My body does not bend that way any longer. Oh. Axe throwing. they got axe throwing. Wow. They've got pickleball. They've got basketball. They do. They, 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 Andrew, your sport, let's get a two-on-two two team, Andrew. No, they don't have two-on-two. Two. They do have three-on-three. Three, oh, three-on-three. Three. Which you loved in the Olympics last year. Yes. That'd Ooh, be fun. Maybe I should sign up for that. They have soccer, track and field, Carol Frost. Yes. Huge. She broke a massive record there last yeah. year. So we'll hear more about that coming up with Dave in just a little bit. You know, uh, 
the, the SEC coaches, Jessica, had a meeting today, uh, and they kept Jimbo and Nick far apart. They were like <laughs> opposite ends of the room when they had to sit down and talk with I them. mean, talk about summer drama. That was wild, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. I don't think those two like each other. But they, they're, they have... They're, they're trying to decide whether to go to a nine-game conference schedule, which I believe in this era of the playoff, everybody should do the same thing. If you're the Pac-12, the Big Ten, the Big 12, the SEC, if one or more leagues are playing nine and other leagues are only playing eight, that's an advantage, right? And the SEC has been at eight. They're talking about going to nine, and they're talking about something you and I have talked about is if they go to nine, trying to hold some rivalries together, making three of your nine permanent every year, and then you rotate the other six. We think that's probably the way the Big Ten is leaning. I think that's the way the SEC is leaning to go to nine games. But that's not fair. The Big 12's played nine. The Big Ten's played nine. Pac-12's played nine. The SEC's down there playing their eight league games. Yeah, I mean... It's an advantage. I, it, it's it's going to be fascinating, especially because with the Big 12, though, they're about to grow. They're going to have to change their... Yeah approach and then depending on what the Big Ten is throwing around I mean I would think that that's going to continue to be a changing topic I still think the Big Ten might expand oh I really do okay when in the next Before five the years TV contract? no I don't think I don't think so no that would be like now then, yeah because then you would <laughs> have to like well we'd have a story wouldn't we yeah but, but I, that goes into it though because I know it does it, then it would. I would think it would be if that's going to happen. It'd be the next time they negotiate the TV deal, so maybe which you maybe don't. is what is going into the contract negotiation now with this TV deal. Is they don't want to sign a big long term. Maybe three or five years. Yeah, and maybe hey, we can renegotiate if we add new teams or, or whatnot. I did find a quote from Lane Kiffin. Of course, was the one that they asked about the drama oh, yeah. between. I'm sure, he had an opinion. Saban and Jimbo, and he said. I guess the best way to describe it is somehow our group is more professional in the room together than they are on camera by themselves. <laughs> I kind of compare it to texts where people like to say things on a text that they don't do it in person. I kind of like it's kind of like that. So there you go. And that's true. When you're in the same room with somebody, you're less likely to verbally attack them than you are if you're like hundreds of miles away. And then um, uh, Chip Kelly said. Um, or, sorry, uh, LSU. Brian uh, Kelly. Brian Kelly, yeah. not Chip Kelly. They weren't wrestling in there, I can tell you that. So apparently <laughs> they all got grilled about it. Well, they probably had a good chuckle over the whole thing. Now, maybe not Jimbo and Nick, but everybody else is probably yeah. loving it. And I would think uh, Nick would probably get over it quicker than Jimbo. Jimbo seemed a little bit salty. I did see a quote. Eli, I may have messed the Missouri coach. Is it Drinkets? Drinkwits? Uh, drink, I think it's Drinkwitz. Um, the Missouri coach said, well, we sit alphabetically. He says, I always sit next to Mike Leach, and I'm always worried I'm going to get in trouble because he talks a lot. <laughs> and I'm gonna start, somebody's going to call me out for not listening to the meeting. At least you're sitting next to someone, though, that, like, um, he's going to be the bigger show, you know? Um, How about the state of Mississippi adding Leach and Link? I mean, wild. It was funny because um, I was actually in Midland, Texas, for a year and covered – the uh, Big 12 back when Leach was there, and I had talked to a player that was from the Midland area, and he said Leach sometimes would just ride his bike around in his scuba gear, like he'd go scuba diving, full scuba gear in the in the campus pool. I believe it. And then he'd just ride around on his bicycle in full scuba gear. Wow. So I mean, the you pirate. never know. You know the the conference, the Big 12 conference used to have. Monday teleconferences with the football coaches. I don't know if they still do or not, but the coaches would come on for 10 minutes, take a few questions on a Monday after the football games. Well, one time, Leach, it's Leach's turn. He's there. He's there for the call. And all of a sudden, he interrupts a, a reporter's question to go, hang on a minute, I'm going through the drive through And he orders like a burger and fries. And, <laughs> he yeah, doesn't, even a mute, and a, doesn't even mute. <laughs> his... No, he doesn't mute. Oh, my so we're gosh. all you're listening to him order something in the drive through in Lubbock. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, he just is, he marches to the beat of his own drum and doesn't care. Sure does. He does not, he does not care what, what you think about that. So uh, those meetings were going on today. They're trying to figure out their future scheduling. Their TV deal's not up for a couple of years. They're also thinking about the additions of OU in Texas in 2025. So they're trying to figure their way through all that. I just want uniformity. If we're going to go and expand playoffs, 
everybody should play the same number of conference games and not the SEC get in the way. And I think the ACC does too. They only play eight. And then you can go schedule a couple FCF schools and get yourself automatic wins, give your teams kind of a week off to heal their bodies up. That's not really right. I agree. And it's just, you know, it's still just frustrating again that SEC bias that we hear about because you can't tell me that some of the bottom half of the teams in other leagues wouldn't beat the worst teams in the SEC. And bet I just think, yeah, they're, they're top heavy. They are. But once you get past, you know, the middle of the road, I mean, pretty much they're don't compete. They can't compete with the bottom half of teams in other leagues. So I mean, and then I don't know. It just yeah, the the. The SEC bias and then the non, it doesn't match with everybody else. I, I, I would like to see that somehow get worked out. I agree. Buckle up. Put that phone down. It's a reminder for the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Um, you and I have not talked about the topic of replay in sports. I want to get into that because in the NBA game the other night between the Heat and the Celtics, they, there was a three-pointer made by Max Struess from the Heat early in the third quarter. Made a three-pointer. Heat have a little run coming up. They're down like three points. And then all of a sudden, you look at a scoreboard, and those three points get taken off the board. Apparently, back in NBA headquarters, they reviewed the three-pointer and determined that Max Struess had stepped out of bounds before he shot the ball, which the on-court officials had not caught. Four or five minutes of game actions come and gone, and then they go back and adjust the score. I don't like that. If you don't catch it right away, I think you should leave, well, leave it if, alone. Well, and if the referees that are there don't catch it, okay, let the control center do it, and then they make the call. If they're the ones that are making the call anyways, why do we need to waste five minutes? They can right. watch it. They have enough people on that team. They watch it. They determine. Then it should just happen. We shouldn't have to go to a delay right. to figure it out. But, you know, several possessions had happened. All of a sudden, Eric Spolster, the Miami Heat coach, who I like, I think he's a good guy. Yeah. Looks up and goes, why are we? Why do we lose three points? And they go, well, New Jersey decided your guy was out of bounds. That was like five minutes ago. How oh, are we doing saying, that? You're saying they didn't. Was, it wasn't five minutes they were deliberating over the video. They kept yeah. Yeah. playing, and yeah. then all of a sudden you go, and, and again, it was early in the third quarter, so it wasn't an end of game situation. But really, we're gonna go back and take something off the board from four or five minutes ago. I, I don't mind that because at least we're not sitting there watching them go over the True. review over and over again. And you never know when two points or one point, a three pointer or two pointer can make a difference in a win or a loss. The Heat were not happy. Yeah. That, that took that long to do that. And and I think the Heat dispute the fact that he was out of bounds. Yeah, they, there should be a cutoff point, like you know, if the it's, next possession, yeah. next dead ball. Yeah, if you don't catch it right away, then yeah. Because I think in college, you'll see officials like, not sure if it was a two or a three, and they'll look at the, the, the scores table and go, next dead ball, we're going to yeah. come check it out. Yeah, I mean, my brother's a college official, and, and there's a certain, there's a time period that you can do that. And if you miss that before the timeout, the media timeout, it's over and done with. So. Yeah, the Heat were not happy. Again, what they end up losing by four? I think they lost by four. So three points. In the end, and again, this is the third quarter, right. way before the end of the game. In the end, it could have meant something. So, strange. Yeah, I, especially never like seen for them happen. to not know and then to yeah. just be, hey, we're where'd down, the, we lost three points. Yeah. Where'd, that, where'd they go? Yelling at what some happened? assistant coach. What happened? <laughs> go get these guys straight over there. Crazy stuff. All right, uh, again, coming up here in a few minutes, Mike Rooney from ESPN is going to join us, talk about the college baseball. The selection Monday was yesterday. The 64 team field is set. The 16 pods with four teams starts on Friday. It all culminates in Omaha in a couple of weeks with the College World Series up at Charles Schwab Fields. We're going to talk to Mike, and then we're going to hear from Dave Manerick, who is with the uh, Nebraska Sports Council, getting ready to put on the. Uh, Cornhusker State Games in about a month. Our Sports Alley Hotline is always open and available for you at 402-413-2400. It is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance, buy online at woodhouse.com. We're back with Mike Rooney coming up next. 
Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. During the summer of 2021, three UNL students helped safeguard cattle across the state. Neely Anderson, Tatiana Jones, and Ashton Commons developed secure beef supply plans that prevent the spread of disease outbreak. The plans protect nearly 850,000 cattle across our state and provide greater economic security for this vital industry. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Fuel your curiosities and inspire your lifeblood with the first ever Mazda CX-50. Available now at both Woodhouse Mazda locations. The remarkably intuitive standard all-wheel drive Mazda CX-50 is responsive, making the driver's connection to the road natural across a wide variety of driving scenarios. An interior where form and function meet, making the cabin luxurious and durable. See the first ever CX-50 online at WoodhouseMazda.com or in the showroom in Bellevue or at Woodhouse Place off 144th and Giles Road. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Dave's. Visit FamousDave's.com. Husker fans, get ready to be part of the excitement of the 2022-23 Nebraska women's basketball season by joining the season ticket waitlist today. The Huskers return all five starters from a team that won 24 games and advanced to the 2022 NCAA tournament. Make the first choice on the best seats to watch the Huskers in person at Pinnacle Bank Arena this year. Join the waitlist by July 31st at huskers.com slash request list. A tradition of winning doesn't happen overnight. Like any team, you gotta be tough, play smart, and work hard. No one understands this more than Ford Motor Company. They built the best team in the game with Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks 45 years straight. The iconic Ford Bronco and the most powerful Ford Explorer ever. Shop online at buyfordnow.com or visit your local Ford dealer to buy or custom build the perfect truck or SUV for you. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in-venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. The Huskers provide the best on the field, and so does Kubota. The new Kubota L60 Limited Edition Series provides the best package for affordability, quality, and comfort, like the deluxe Grand L factory-installed cab or spacious open operator station. Maximize performance with Kubota's best-in-class HST Plus transmission and many other features of the L60 LE Series. Experience the Kubota difference. Visit NebraskaKubotaDealers.com or see Kubota Omaha in Omaha or Osceola Implement and Supply in Osceola. There's nothing better than the smoky aroma of grilled beef at the ballpark. 
This is Anne Marie with the Nebraska Beef Council reminding you to pick up a package of steaks or burgers for your next tailgate party. Whether you're setting up in the parking lot or cheering from home, nutritious beef is a home run choice when cheering on the Huskers. Visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com for delicious beef recipes, grilling tips, and tailgate inspirations. Beef, it's what's for dinner in Nebraska. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center. It is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. The field is set for the college baseball NCAA tournament, which gets underway later this week at 16 sites around the country. And the guy is going to be all over it and has been all season. Joins us now. That's Mike Rooney of ESPN. And Mike, great job. Last week, I caught you doing some Big 12 tournament action. Saw you in the studio yesterday for Selection Monday. You even are sporting a cool little wardrobe that you and Kyle Peterson broke out over the weekend. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, Tennessee, it, this is a fascinating tournament because Tennessee has been historically great. I mean, you know, they lead the country in home runs and they lead the country in ERA. We haven't seen that since 1996 with LSU. And they didn't even lead it in both. They were just in the top five in both. So, you know, Tennessee, when they hit a home run, they have a daddy hat and the first coat they put on the hitter. So I couldn't resist. So I picked the balls. But it's fun. It's like, hey, who's going to win this thing? Is it the balls or the field? Normally I would pick the field, but this time I picked the balls so I could wear the fur coat. Yeah, they're really dominant. Uh, let's talk about the committee. How did you feel like the committee did in, in, in piecing this thing together? Well, I thought Mike Buddy, the, the AD and Army, who's the chair of the committee, and, you know, Mike Buddy pitched in the big leagues. He played, he pitched at Wake Forest, and he was on the wrong end of this selection show as a player. I thought his answers on our show were all-time best. You know, like, and, and in fairness to previous chairs, that's a really – tough position to be in but you know he owned the decisions he explained clearly why they made the decisions that they made um so you know we can just we can disagree on the decisions uh but i i love the transparency and the clarity um you know i, I think this committee's job became impossible when we the, the conference tournaments just went haywire and the bids just the bubble just exploded and so you know, like, I could see both sides of the argument. NC State was 17 and 16 in the ACC with a 35-ish RPI. Usually that's a two seed. However, they were the 10 seed in the ACC headed into that tournament. So, you know, like, you could, you could kind of trick yourself back and forth. Rutgers was the second-place team in the Big Ten. I mean, that's usually a no-brainer, but they had four games against the RPI top 50 the entire season. Um, barely played any games against teams in the field. So, you know, it's like you can go back and forth, you know, and, and I like what Mike my, my Buddy said. He said, hey, here's the truth. NC State and Rutgers both deserve to be in this tournament. We just ran out of spots. You're right. There's some wacky results over the weekend in some of the conferences, like out, out, out in your neck of the woods, Grand Canyon, I think a lot of people thought would run away with a whack. They don't. New Mexico State comes out of nowhere to win that thing. Those kind of upsets, that's what happens, right? It just blows the bubble up. Yeah, and it's, you know, DBU doesn't win the Valley. Yep. And, you, you know, Wofford, Wofford, they had an incredible season, but they don't win the SOCON, and so UNCG's in there. Uh, yeah, it was just over and over again. You just kept having these weird results in conference tournaments, and that just, it, you know, became a disaster for the bubble team. Yeah, and visit Mike Rooney of ESPN. He'll be all over the college baseball tournament, which gets going this weekend, leading to the College World Series in Omaha in just two weeks. Mike, some interesting new teams will be hosting, including Maryland out of the Big Ten and Georgia Southern. That's kind of a neat look, right, to getting some different teams to host. Yeah, and I, that's one of the big themes for me is that, um, you know, we talked about how dominant Tennessee's been, but I think the atmospheres are going to be great. Oklahoma State's going to be hosting at, you know, what is Obrate Stadium, their new stadium, $75 million stadium that seats 6,000 people. That's going to be awesome. Knoxville's going to be awesome. You mentioned Georgia Southern and Statesboro. That's going to be incredible. Greenville, North Carolina. East Carolina's finally a top eight national seed, so they're fired up down there. Uh, and then you mentioned Maryland. That one's going to be fun. Greg, I would, I would tell you that your backyard is more suited to host a regional yep. than Maryland's baseball facility. Yep. But they're going to make it work, and I love it. If they're going to have humans jammed on top of humans. Uh, you know, they've, I'm sure they've sent the fire marshals on a cruise. 
um, so that they can police this thing. It's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be a great atmosphere, but it's going to be unique. They're bringing in bleachers, you name it. They're bringing it in to stuff people in there. It's honestly one of the rougher places I've called a game from, Mike, in my years as Maryland. It's, it's really I've never rough. Been. Yeah. Never been. Yeah. Yeah, you're not missing much. Uh, let's go to the let's go to the Big Twelve. That had to be tough for the committee, right? I mean, TCU wins the regular season. Oklahoma State was solid all along. Oklahoma wins the tournament. Texas had a good tournament run. To see that league had to be really rough, I would think, for the committee. Yeah, and I think it was it was a microcosm of the whole deal, Greg. Like this was a this was a year of incongruencies. How does TCU win the Big Twelve regular season, but then also have an RPI in the mid 30s? And that, you know, they're the first time that the regular season champ of the Big 12 hasn't hosted. And Arkansas has 18 SEC wins, but an RPI in the 40s. Dallas Baptist had literally the number one non-conference schedule um, when you include wins and strength and the whole thing. They dominated the non-conference. They go 12-11 and 11 and finish third in what I thought was not a vintage year for the Valley. So, you know, the Big 12... Hey, in, in the Big 12, it wasn't just TCU. Like, you could argue that Oklahoma maybe should have been a host. But, I, 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 you know, West Virginia got squeezed out. I do really like Oklahoma State, though. I think they really turned the corner last week at Globe Life. Texas doesn't have great depth on the mound, but when you get them on the days when their best guys are throwing, they could beat anybody. And Oklahoma, you could argue, is the hottest team in the country right now. Again, this is with Mike Rooney of ESPN. He'll be all over the coverage the next couple of weeks of the college baseball tournament. You mentioned Tennessee's your pick, and rightfully so. I don't think anybody's been as dominant as them in recent times. But the Pac-12 has the two and three seeds. What can you tell me about Stanford and Oregon State? Well, you know, Stanford, Stanford made it to Omaha last year, but it was a young team. And they've got a real ace in Alex Williams. Stanford got off to a slow start. They're 32-6 and six in their last 38 games. So they've got an ace on the mound. They've got one of the most dynamic freshmen in the country in Braden Montgomery. He's a six foot three switch hitting center fielder closer up to 98. He's got 16 home runs. Their center fielder, Brock Jones, was a former scholarship defensive back. Um, you know, just fast, powerful. So Stanford's very, very good. Oregon State has Cooper Jerpy, who might be the best pitcher in college baseball, dominant left-hander. They've got Jacob Melton, their center fielder, was the Pac-12 player of the year. So, you know, Oregon State was got a little banged up in the Pac-12 tournament, so that's unfortunate. That's something to keep an eye on. But, you know, those are two Omaha-caliber clubs. They're very high-end teams. Yeah, and see the resurgence again of Oregon State after Coach Casey stepped aside. Looks like they're right back up and have that program running again. Texas A&M gets to host, and here comes TCU. That'll be a fun little storyline, won't it? Yeah, sure will. And, and, you know, that that whole pod is not going to be real fun. I mean, you know, Louisiana, it, Matt Deggs is bringing Louisiana That's to the right. college station. He's got history there. And, hey, you know, Oral Roberts is no picnic as a four seed. They're, they've been to a million regionals, and that's a, almost a 40-win team. So you're right. But, but you know, you got to say that for A&M and Jim Schlossnagel, I mean, he just wrote a textbook on how to, you know, take over a program in year, run, year one, build a great coaching staff, really got after the transfer wire. Um, you know, A&M just about missed the conference tournament last year, and um, now they're hosting, you know, now they're a top eight seed, basically. So really impressive year for the Aggies. Yeah, I saw ORU. They've got some guys that can swing it. That, that'll, they'll be a challenge for those teams down in that regional as well. What's, what's, what's on your schedule? What, what are you going to be doing this week? What's kind of the plan for you for the month of June? Yeah, so Thursday I'll head back to Bristol and we'll do squeeze play from the mothership up, the, up at ESPN. That'll be really fun. That'll be the whip around. We'll be mostly on ESPN Plus and then we'll move to linear channels. So, you know, I think like most of us, we're multi-device watchers now. So we'll do squeeze play this weekend. We're going to do it for Super Regionals too, and then, um, and then we'll head to Omaha and, and crown a champion. Should be good. It's, it's great to have it kind of back in full force. It was great, at least in the Big Ten this year, Mike, to have a full schedule again after last year just going conference only. I know the league is disappointed Rutgers didn't get in, but this is going to be a fun month of college baseball, and we'll look forward to your great coverage all month. Appreciate it. Great talking to you.
There he is, Mike Rooney of ESPN. You'll be following his coverage the next couple of weeks as they head to, get the teams ready to head to Omaha for the College World Series. He joined us on our Sports Alley Hotline. It's brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance, buy online at woodhouse.com. When we come back, Dave Maneric, who is the executive director of the Nebraska Sports Council, will join us. The Cornhusker State Games are fast approaching. We'll hear about about this year's games and contest that's coming up next let me grab my car keys and we'll roll Are we still going to that new bar downtown yeah it's supposed to be fun lexi give me driving directions from home to downtown bar district auto correct suggest uber pick up home drop off downtown bar district no i'm driving suggest the metro bus departing in 12 minutes huh. point taken lexi we'll grab a ride if you drink don't drive Decide to Ride, brought to you in partnership by Anheuser Busch, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and Uber. Huskers fans, it's time to plan your dream trip to Ireland and see your team face the Northwestern Wildcats at Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland. Single game tickets are on sale now at huskers.com forward slash Ireland. Start the 2022 season in the best way. Plan your dream trip to Ireland and see your team face the Northwestern Wildcats at Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland. Buy your single game ticket today at huskers.com forward slash Ireland. Hey folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Daves. Visit FamousDaves.com. The Nebraska FFA is growing leaders and building communities. Together, we are strengthening agriculture. The Nebraska FFA Foundation believes in our future leaders and the communities they serve. We believe in the future of agriculture. Join us in the I Believe in the Future of Ag campaign. Learn more at NEFFAFoundation.org. Brought to you by Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be, member FDIC. And Farmers Cooperative, standing with those who grow. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. The 2022 Nebraska football season is right around the corner, and we need you in Memorial Stadium this fall. A customizable Husker football three-game mini plan is on sale now for only $180. To purchase your 2022 Husker football three-game mini plan today, or for more information, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. Go Big Red. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Okay, let's get a photo of the bride and groom standing next to that giant mud puddle. Good. Now smile. Oh, honey, don't look now, but you're covered in mud. Oh, so is your white tux. You know what this means, don't you? Trucks and bucks from the Nebraska Lottery is back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the happiest day of my life. Don't you think we should head to the nearest Nebraska Lottery retailer? I do. Trucks and Bucks is back, and you could win one of eight new trucks. Top prize odds one in 336,000. From the University of Nebraska Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. The university has a new undergraduate business and law major. Students majoring in business and law are learning to use legal knowledge to better solve business challenges. They are also gaining skills in regulatory compliance, financial services, securities regulation, and corporate social responsibility. Upon graduation, they will boost the state's talent pool in these critical areas of expertise. Let me grab my car keys and we'll roll. Are we still going to that new bar downtown? Yeah, it's supposed to be fun. Lexi, give me driving directions from home to downtown bar district. 
Autocorrect. Suggest Uber. Pick up. Home. Drop off downtown bar district. No, I'm driving. Suggest the metro bus. Departing in 12 minutes. Huh. Point taken, Lexi. We'll grab a ride. If you drink, don't drive. Decide to ride. Brought to you in partnership by Anheuser Busch, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and Uber. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the fields, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant decal brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with decal. Always read and follow green marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, it is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Well, now that we are officially into summer, with Memorial Day's weekend behind us, we can start looking for all those summertime activities. And one of the highlights every year are the Cornhusker State Games, which I believe are like 45 days away. We're not far at all for that. And here to tell us all about that statement, Eric, the executive director of the Nebraska Sports Council, who oversees the Cornhusker state games dave thank you so much are you ready how, how everybody getting this is this thing lined up and ready to roll well thank you except for that part where you said 45 days now you're making me panic a little bit because it's <laughs> coming right up isn't it no our team is ready we're we're fired up uh the entries are really starting to roll in we have uh the 38th annual corn husker state games coming up and it's hard to believe it's been that many, but most of the sports, most of the events are July 15th through the 24th. And most of the events are in Lincoln, but we do have events around the state and, and uh, including some maybe nine or ten sports in Omaha now, two sports in Kearney. We've got a couple in Columbus. Our swimming is in Fremont. So we've really made an effort to get out geographically and bring some events to the other communities in the state. But we're expecting about 10,000 participants again. We have more than 70 sports that people can participate in. It's all ages, all ability, all, all abilities, all fun. Great stuff. Usually you add sports in, in, the, in the last couple of years. Have you added anything new to the menu this year? Uh, we have a couple of new sports. One is uh, we brought back CrossFit. It's been on hiatus for a few years, and we have a gym in Omaha that stepped up and, and decided they would like to host it. And the other one slips my mind right now, but it's all there if you want to check it out and, and just click on the sport listing in CornhuskerStateGames.com. Very good. I know you, you know, in the past several years, axe throwing has been added to it. Uh, you've added pickleball. Those are some things that have really gained in popularity in recent years. They have. Pickleball continues to be the fastest growing sport, and we're near the cap on pickleball already. We had a resurgence in powerlifting recently, and we've already actually maxed out with 150 powerlifters this year. So that sport has a, a kind of a new breath of life. But you know, the, the, over the years, the, as you know, sports have an opportunity to, to be part of the games and they apply and, and we bring them on. It always brings some new life to the whole program. Dave, what, uh, where, where are we at on, you talked about how many people have registered already. Is there a deadline coming up? What, what if people, if we've piqued somebody's interest to do this, what, what do they need to know? Well, the final deadline for most sports is July 5th. So everybody's got, a, you know, at least a month to get their entries in. But it's real important, if possible, that you get your registration done by the end of the day, June 1st. And the reason that's important is June 1st is what we call our free shirt deadline. Supplies are all wanky with uh, yep. apparel and all other things in the world these days. So we were able to purchase a basic supply of shirts and we we're not sure if we can purchase any more but the the safe deadline to get a free shirt is june 1 so that's the way we promoted it this year if you register after june 1st there's no guarantee you're going to get a free shirt our there'll be some items that you can buy in our store after that time uh, but june 1 is really important if you want that shirt if not you know take your time look through the sports get your team together your people together and make sure you're registered by July 5th. So July 1st, June 1st is uh, 
is tomorrow. So there you go, folks. You want to get that free T-shirt, get yourself signed up there. Is there any difference in deadlines if it's a team sport compared to a, an individual sport? Nope. The deadlines are all the same for teams or individuals these days. So, uh, But, again, this is a big thing for teams. I mentioned the free shirt deadline because you got to know your players on your roster if you want to put in for the free shirt. So there, there would – and. We've seen a steady stream of teams, so I know most of them have the word. But if you, if you haven't yet, get the, get the names and the shirt sizes to us for sure by the end of the day, June 1. So those mostly kids, I'm presuming, on your team can get the shirt. Very good. Again, this is with Dave Maneric, who is the executive director of the Nebraska Sports Council. The Cornhusker State Games, July 15th is when they open and usually have a spectacular opening ceremonies. Is that on the docket again for this year? Yeah, we're excited. We have freestyle motocross as the main headline entertainment. Uh, we've got Scott Murray, who was one of the one of the first drivers to do a double backflip. I'm not sure you're going to see that in our opening ceremonies, but I'm pretty sure you're going to see a backflip on a motorcycle over the 50-yard line at Seacrest Field. But all of the other favorites that that uh, people have come to enjoy over the years that make this a a great family entertainment option are the skydivers, the fireworks, of course, the parade of athletes when all the athletes come in. And then there's always the lighting of the cauldron by the mystery torch lighter. And, and uh, we've got a great one in store for the athletes and guests this year. Well, my invitation must have got lost on that. I, I don't see that in your, my, my mailbox here. But I can't wait to see who that is. Yeah, we're saving you. We're saving yeah. you for the centennial year. Oh, yeah. Dave, we appreciate it. CornhuskerStateGames.com is the website. All the information is there. And, folks, if you've been on the fence about whether to get yourself signed up for this, tomorrow's a deadline day to get your T-shirt. You can still sign up afterwards. You just don't get that T-shirt. Dave, thank you so much. Can't wait for this to get going. 45 days. I'm sorry I gave you a heart attack with that, but that's just reality. <laughs> that's reality. And it always hits us right after the Memorial Day weekend, and that's a good thing. I mean, we're excited. It keeps everybody busy. And it's all there for you at CornhuskerStateGames.com. And a quick shout-out to the sponsors and volunteers. That's what make the Cornhusker State Games work, and we're excited for a, a great 38th annual one coming up. Very good. Dave, as always, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. There he is, Dave Maneric, the executive director of the Cornhusker State Games, 45 days away. Get signed up there. Over 10,000 athletes. That's unbelievable, that kind of a number. He joined us on our Sports Sunday Hotline, brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse, first 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance. Buy online at woodhouse.com. Phone lines, text lines back open, 402-413-2400. The number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. Jessica will rejoin me next. A tradition of winning doesn't happen overnight. Like any team, you got to be tough, play smart, and work hard. No one understands this more than Ford Motor Company. They built the best team in the game with Ford F Series, America's best selling trucks 45 years straight, the iconic Ford Bronco, and the most powerful Ford Explorer ever. Shop online at buyfordnow.com or visit your local Ford dealer to buy or custom build the perfect truck or SUV for you. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Hi, I'm Nebraska Pick 3. I'm My Day. I'm 2x2. Two two. We're three great lotto games from the Nebraska Lottery. And this is our first radio spot ever. But we've only got 30 seconds, so we gotta talk fast. With Nebraska Pick 3, you get to choose your own bet type. With My Day, you choose a six-digit date. And 2x2 two two has a $22,000 top prize. And, and we're, we're all just $1, $1 per play, play with, with drawings, drawings every day. day. That was easy. And we did great. With eight seconds to spare. We should be doing all the lottery's ads. <clears throat> Sorry, that gig is already taken. Must be 19, please play responsibly. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. See Shelter Agent Brent Custer in Broken Bow and ask about Shelter's competitive rates. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. 
Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, folks, this is Famous Dave. You know the difference between an ordinary get-together and a famous one? At most parties, the food's pretty forgettable. But imagine your table loaded with award-winning barbecue, chopped pork sandwiches, roasted chicken, and mouth-watering juicy ribs. From birthdays to corporate events, any size groups, we'll customize our menu to fit your budget. Make your next get-together fun and famous with catering from Famous Dave's. Visit FamousDave's.com. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the fields, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant decal brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with decal. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Insider Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center. It's sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, back with you. Final segment of our show here tonight. Well, you just heard Dave Menarek. Did any of those sports pique your interest to sign up for? You know, um, I just am not really an axe thrower. I've tried that before. It's a I've lot never done harder it. than it looks. I thought I'd be good it. at it because I'm like, oh, well, I can shoot the basketball. Surely I can shoot the axe. But nope, I was terrible at that. <laughs> so be out on that. Pickleball, I've tried that before. Not really a fan. Um, but I never really was a tennis player either. So I'm out on pickleball. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd probably stick to more of the traditional, like the basketball or you, or Andrew, like that. and you got to find a third for the I know three we, on we've got to find a third. T- well, but I think you got four, right? If you have a sub, usually it's three and then you have a sub. Yeah. So you need two more people. I mean, um, we obviously need somebody that can play some defense because neither Andrew and I are going to play any defense. So, uh, <laughs> if, if you want to play defense on our three on three team, we might sign up. Shoot us, a, shoot us a, a note on the text line. I, I was on their website. Man, they have just such a wide variety of sports that they have available for this. And I'm going to have I, to go. I mean, I was telling you in the break, I was like, I don't think Oklahoma has anything like this. But I know you said Kansas does. They do. I bet they do. I, pretty much every state does. It's just, I mean, it's just incredible. 10,000 people have already signed up to participate in some of the sports. It's crazy. But yeah. I, I mean, I'm definitely out on the... Um, like the cycling or the weightlifting. Oh, aquatics. I could do some swimming. I could do some swimming. Yeah, they got aquatics in there. I have a football seven on seven. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Yeah, soccer is in there. Andrew says he's a soccer player, so Um, a little bit of that. Yeah, they they have a wide variety of sports that they do that. So, again, July 15th. July 5th is the deadline. If you want to get a T-shirt to register, you got to do it by tomorrow. So have fun with that, folks. We appreciate Dave coming on. Where do they sail? Uh, on their website, they list their venues. You'd have to go look that up. I think skydiving. How do you make that a competition? I, right. I don't know how they do. I mean, so. you have to land in a certain spot, Probably, or what? Probably. Yeah. Um, I have been skydiving. It's pretty fun. Have you really? Did yeah. You do a tandem jump? Yes, I did. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to do so many tandems to before. To do a yeah. solo. Yeah. So that would make sense. Um, two rounds of competition, weather permitting. Formation skydiving is a four-way team plus camera person. Teams are responsible for providing their own camera person. Sport accuracy is two rounds of competition. So I don't well, so if you need a camera person, Nick Burkhart could be right? a camera person. Yeah. <laughs> now we're talking, right? So we'll sign him up. I, oh. I, I don't know if he's a Heights guy, though. But, yeah, wow. Crazy, crazy stuff. I didn't stuff. even know you could make that a competition. So It's fun. It's a fun thing. It's 38 years they've been doing this around the state. Again, a lot of the competition takes place in Lincoln. There are, they use Omaha and they use Baxter Arena for the hockey. Uh, they use some places out in Kearney and Hastings as well for, for all of that. Here's a chess, too. Here's a fun story. So when I was at Oklahoma, I did a feature. Kyler Murray was a chess champion. Really? He's really, really smart guy and just took it up one time and then got really good at it and won his chess league in like seventh in like middle school. So I had played Baker Mayfield in Mario Kart and beat him. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to learn how to play chess. And it's not that easy. Nope. So I look like an idiot because Kyler is like an expert at it. So there you go. If, uh, 
you're a fan of Kyler Murray, the Cardinals, or even just watching an NFL game, he that's maybe an inside fact you didn't know. The Cardinals are going to be the um, Hard Knocks franchise yeah. for HBO. That'll be fun. This training camp. That will be fun. With the old oh, Cliffy Poo? You know, one of the traditions of Memorial Weekend is the Indy 500. And I've never understood, after these guys are out there in a little tight box, probably sweating profusely, the thought of having to drink the milk at the end of the race, the winner has to drink a little pint of milk. That is disgusting, isn't it? I like milk, but not after I'm sweating and doing that. Yeah, no, I don't. I'm. I don't like milk actually. So unless it's chocolate milk, so I. I don't that, like. Milk. Yeah. Um, there. What was it? I did a trivia question with the women's basketball team when we went to Indianapolis. That's right. How you many did. laps are in the Indy 500? Well, it's, a, it's like two and a half miles around, so it's probably 200. Yeah, 200. Yeah. 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 Nobody knew that. They all said 500. We, Husker baseball played in, and we fly into Indianapolis and then bust down to Bloomington. So we flew over and I was tapping one of the coaches. I said, there's the track right below us. We flew right over the top of the speedway. Pretty cool. Thing. They had like 400,000 people go to that. It's crazy how many people attend that thing. And yeah, and I'm not, a, I've never been a racing person. I'm not huge on it either. No. Um, but Sammy who's our intern, she wants to one day maybe that she's into all of that. Really? She likes all of it. and all that? Wow. Motocross, all of it. So Good maybe for her. That's, I haven't seen Sammy. Is she still around? What's I think now's here? the time that a lot of those, you know, sports get to take a little time off because since soccer's a fall sport, she'll be in and she'll be uh, back to work pretty soon and, and uh, back to fall, whatever they, summer workouts, which is Hugely important for soccer. Soccer's, I mean, they start a week or two before volleyball starts, and we don't have their schedule yet. I was asking some folks today, where's the soccer schedule? They said they're waiting on one contract to come back. So we got some stuff that's going to be popping in the next few weeks. You know, we, we just said how crazy May went, but I was sitting here trying to, um, you know, make some plans for some content, for some podcasts, and you think about it, I mean, really, we only have about – six weeks yeah. before it is right. football. Go time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, June's going to fly by, and then it's only two weeks of July, and then, hey, it's it's football time. What hurts this week is that last year we had Husker baseball still playing right. in the regionals, and they're out. And they were out last week, so they weren't even a part of the, the conference tournament, which is really, really sad. Hopefully that doesn't happen That again. was my first night in Lincoln, Nebraska. I watched Nebraska beat Arkansas. Arkansas. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, okay, tomorrow night here on the program, we're going to talk about Husker football is about to start having these Friday night camps that some of them are open to the public. You can come in. You know, they don't charge anything. Come in and watch these camps going on. We're going to have a member of the Husker football recruiting staff come talk about these camps. These are big. These are big for recruiting. These are you make big impressions on guys you're trying to get to come to school here. And it's also great opportunities for these other kids. I can't tell you how many of them said, oh, I came to camp here. Austin Allen was one of those. Uh, um, who was it? Um, Garrett Nelson got yeah. his offer after he coming to a camp and was crying because it meant so much to him. Luke Reimer was another kid that came to a camp. There's a lot of kids that might not necessarily go to these huge schools that get seen all the time that have an opportunity to come show out and then somehow they, they wind up with an offer. So it's, it's big for the the coaches and recruiting, but it's also big for these guys to come in and, and show what they can do and, and perhaps maybe land an offer. Well, we'll give you some more details about that coming up tomorrow night. That recruiting office also has been adding some staff members. We'll get the latest on that tomorrow night on the program. And Chris Plank, your friend from Oklahoma, is going to be calling some softball down for the College World Series, which starts Thursday. We're going to get a full rundown on the field. Yeah, so he's he's the voice of Oklahoma softball, but he's calling games for ESPNU, for uh, Westwood One, and for uh, NCAA softball so he's been diving into all of that can give us all the breakdown so he's gonna get us prepared for that you know this is a sport member last year they broke all kinds of records in viewership and I imagine that it's going to be the same thing this year with um, you know the parody and all the excitement surrounding it so I'm excited to dive into that very good hey buckle up put that phone down it's a reminder from the NDOT highway safety office thanks to Tim and Andrew and to Jessica and all of you for being a part of this we're glad you spent a little bit of your Tuesday night with us back with another full show coming your way tomorrow here on the Huskers Radio Network.
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. There is no place like Nebraska, and there's no place that treats you like home, like Sap Brothers. For 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and been a reliable partner to local farms and Husker fans across Nebraska. Providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane. Servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into their travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Shop Woodhouse Buick GMC first for all your vehicle needs. With two ways to shop, we make car buying easy. Purchase your new or certified pre-owned vehicle all from the comfort of your own home with available pickup and delivery options. Plus, chat with a sales team member, reserve your vehicle, and complete a credit application online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. Or visit our climate-controlled showroom for comfortable shopping year-round. Streamlining your car buying experience. This is Woodhouse Buick GMC. We are professional grade. Husker fans, get ready to be part of the excitement of the 2022-23 Nebraska women's basketball season by joining the season ticket waitlist today. The Huskers return all five starters from a team that won 24 games and advanced to the 2022 NCAA tournament. Make the first choice on the best seats to watch the Huskers in person at Pinnacle Bank Arena this year. Join the waitlist by July 31st at huskers.com slash request list. As the Huskers head to the seventh inning stretch, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioning is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. Call or visit SOSHVAC.com today. SOS to the rescue. 